What's up gaming heroes, welcome back to another awesome World of Warcraft video. My name is Erosium and in today's video we are looking at tips for beginners in World of Warcraft 2022. Now there are a lot of people still joining World of Warcraft completely fresh from other games and this video is going to cover my tips for getting started in World of Warcraft. First is first, there are many many different classes that you can choose from and races that you can choose from completely depending on obviously what faction you choose and what type of character do you want to play? My best advice is if you are completely new to the game and you haven't got the allied races or anything like that, feel free just to choose the race that you feel like you will identify most as and then play the class that fits best with your personality. If you want to play as a healer, play as a healer. If you want to play as a tank, play as a tank. If you want to play as a DPS, play as a DPS. And if you want to play as all three, then choose one of the classes which has the flexibility to do all three. That would be largely Paladin or the Druid. If you actually go over each of the classes, you can actually see exactly what type of roles you can fulfill within World of Warcraft. So you could play as a healer or ranged, if you're playing as a priest, if you're playing as a warlock, you're considered a ranged damage. If you're playing as a Paladin, you can play as tank, healer or melee damage. As a Druid, you can play as tank, healer, range damage, or even melee damage. Just go over each class and you can work out for yourself what it is exactly you want to play as. World of Warcraft has so many unique races and each one has its very own starting zone so you can experience what it's like to be of that race in World of Warcraft. Each class has its own unique way of playing the game. If you play as a warrior, you're typically a class which delves into the combat, flies in there and just smashes everything it sees with big battle axes, big swords and everything like that. If you play as a tank, obviously you're using your shield and you're gonna be able to take more of a hit from your enemies and hopefully your allies are gonna heal you up. If you're playing as a hunter, you will be a typically a ranged class with a pet who will protect you from taking too much aggro from the mobs. Additionally, you can also play even as melee as a hunter, which has a pretty fun spec called survival. As a mage, you will be able to play as either frost, arcane, or fire. Each of these will completely tailor your mage as to what type of spells that you can use in combat and how that feels. As a rogue, you'll be sneaking into combat to try and get the drop on your unsuspecting enemies as they uh, have their back turned. You can pick their pockets, steal their gold, and then slay them whilst they're not looking. As a priest, typically most people think that a priest was just there to heal their friends and keep their, their allies alive, but no, you can also play as a shadow priest here, which is really, really cool, where you can basically destroy your enemies with shadowy spells or even play as discipline and use shields on your allies whilst also doing damage and the more damage you do to your enemies the more heals that your allies get as a warlock you will be able to summon demons to do your bidding or apply curses and afflictions to your enemies and watch them wither and slowly but surely die as a paladin you will have multiple options as to how you want to play, whether you are deciding to be that big, beefy, Tauren tank that runs into combat and takes all the damage and occasionally is able to heal themselves or even shield themselves. Or if you want to be a healer whose main job in life is just to keep all their friends and allies alive. Or if you want to be the DPS running in there with a two-handed mace and just smashing your enemies into a pulp. Additionally, you could play as a druid and have access to multiple forms of combat, whether you're going to play as a cat form or if you're going to play as perhaps a bear and be a tank or you're going to play as a big moonkin, which would be more of your astral spell form. Or maybe you even want to play as a treant and heal your allies. It's really down to you what it is you want to play as. As a shaman, you'll be able to call upon the elements, whether it is fire, earth, air, or water. You will be able to use these elements to either deal damage as a spellcaster, or melee damage as a melee damage, or even to heal your allies and keep 
the life as they take all the damage for you and protect you. As a monk, you will have the tranquility and clarity of the mind in order to repel your enemies with vicious punches and kicks. Additionally, if you choose to play as a tank monk, a brewmaster, then you will defeat your enemies whilst also being a little bit drunk. You'll be throwing massive kegs at your enemies and using your abilities to give yourself stagger and avoid taking damage. As a demon hunter, you really only have two choices, and that is you go tank spec and be the most mobile, annoying, amazing beefy tank possible or you can be a melee dps and be zooming around the room blasting enemies with your superior dps and never being able to actually get hit or maybe just maybe you wish to be that person who was once a grand hero of the horde or the alliance but unfortunately fell in battle only to be resurrected at a future date as a death knight death knights can be melee dps or tanks you have multiple options as a death knight to play as frost blood or unholy blood being the ability to sap energy and life from your enemies to give yourself life and therefore your form of tanking comes in the fact that you just can't be defeated you just keep sapping the health from your enemies or maybe you want to play as frost and destroy your enemies with all your frozen abilities or maybe you want to summon the hordes of the undead and play as unholy whatever it may be choose your class and your race and give it a go they're all really fun and have a unique identity to every single one it is worth noting that if you choose alliance you will not be able to play with horde at this date of 2022 and if you choose horde you will not be able to play with alliance you will uh, be playing against one another as you are a new player in world of warcraft you will not have access to the allied races right here as these require you to have certain achievements done in game to play them however you will have these ones on the outside and once you've selected your character go ahead and give them appropriate name i'm gonna do this one senior gym <laughs> and at this point i can go ahead and change the style of what i want to look like i can randomize it as well it doesn't really matter too much because i can change all of this in games by visiting a barber's change the body type everything it is that i want to do let's go ahead and select create character at this point it's going to say to us do you want to start in your race specific zone which would be Ammon Vale for the Drenai, or would you like to start in the new zone, Exile's Reach, which Blizzard recently added into the game to make it easier for brand new players to get started in World of Warcraft. This is the zone that I would suggest you get started in, Exile's Reach. It takes 20 to 30 minutes, it's pretty quick, and it teaches you all the fundamentals to World of Warcraft and getting started. Upon locking into your character, you will notice that there is a tutorial here, and you need to just simply follow the tutorial in order to progress the next part in the story. Upon completing Exile's Reach, you will be you will eventually be asked to do a dungeon, which when completed, you will be flown to your major city. If you're Alliance, you'll be teleported basically to Stormwind, or if you are Horde, you will be teleported slash flown to Ogrimmar right here. When you get here, the game's going to give you an NPC to speak to, and this NPC will give you a tour of Stormwind. Simply follow them around, and they will guide you around Stormwind. Now, as this is your first playthrough, Blizzard have decided that anyone new that's playing the game, you need to go and play the previous expansions leveling route that's completely fine and do the battle for azeroth tides of war campaign by simply following your guide they will take you through to learn your mount training and then they will take you through to the start of the campaign follow that campaign all the way from stormwind keep or ogrima to bfa when you get into bfa do all of the quests and follow the routes as the game will dictate to you it is worth noting that when you are doing this you can also sign up for random dungeons depending on your level and what route you are using to level up. As this is your first time, you will be leveling up in BFA. The quests in BFA are really fun, so get those done and get yourself to level 50. When you've done enough quests in BFA that you have finally dinged level 50, you will automatically be teleported to Stormwind or Ogrimmar, where the beginnings of Shadowlands will start. And this is where you'll be told to go to the Shadowlands to help your leaders in their struggles. By simply following this quest line, you will be taken to the Moor, where you must help your leaders in their struggle against the evil Jailer. Eventually, once you've completed the Moor, you will be teleported to Oribos, where you will begin your campaign. This will take you through 
all of the various different zones of Shadowlands, such as Maldraxxus, Bastion, Ardenweald, and Revendreth. You will complete the zones until you hit level 60, and then everything will open up, and you can follow through the campaign as you see fit. Always remember, you can sign up to dungeons at any point that you like, and you can also sign up to Battlegrounds by simply pressing H and joining there. To sign up to dungeons, you can press I and literally just look for whatever it is you want to look for. If it's a dungeon, got different tabs down here. Now, as a newer player, you're going to have a few different options that you might want to consider changing to make your life a little bit easier. One of the main options that I like to change upon locking into the game for the first time is going ahead and going to interface. So to do that, simply need to press escape, go to interface, go to controls and click auto loot. This is really useful because this will effectively allow you to just collect all of the loot whenever you actually slay a mob and right click their corpse. You also have the option of adding additional action bars onto your screen so that you have more abilities to use on screen. To do this, press escape again and go to interface again and go down to action bars. You can select bottom left bar, bottom right bar, right bar and right bar too. And this gives you lots of room for putting additional action bars and spells onto these action bars. Once you've got these action bars, you can go ahead and press escape, click key bindings, and you can change the key bindings on these action bars. Simply select action bar, and then you can change these to any keys that suit you best. If you want to have a key called E to use ability for E, you can easily do so. Just remember that you can accidentally over key bind a previous action, so it's always worth checking with your movement keys just to make sure not something that's already been used. World of Warcraft is a game that has been out for 18 years. This means that the game has developed and constantly improved and the community has helped this along by creating add-ons which basically allow the game to work in an even more comfortable and efficient manner. These are add-ons. To get add-ons, the best way to get add-ons would be to download Curse Forge. You can simply go to Google and just search Curse Forge and it will pop up. You download the client and this is a great program to have on your computer because it doesn't just work for World of Warcraft, it can use be used for a bunch of different games. World of Warcraft is one of the main ones it is used for, however, and this is a great application to have because it keeps all of your add-ons constantly up to date. And a game such as World of Warcraft is constantly being updated, and therefore add-ons need to be updated as well. But having Curse Forge makes it so much easier and it's completely free. Now we're at the point where I would suggest to you to experiment with add-ons. See if there's any add-ons out there that you want to try out and add to make things a little bit easier maybe just change the way things look. Some add-ons to get you started that I would suggest is try out Bartender 4. Bartender 4 is a great add-on which will basically allow you to have a slightly different UI and to be able to keybind a little bit easier. Another great add-on is called Bagnon which basically puts all your bags into one and makes it appear as one giant bag. This is really useful if you just quickly want to be able to track down your items. Another great add-on for if you are trying to level up in the quickest way possible is an add-on called Azeroth Autopilot. This is a really good add-on that helps you basically go on the fastest route to get leveled up. Have an experiment, have a look online as to what add-ons you want to try out. There are so many different add-ons. Give it a go and see what you think. Ultimately, if you don't like one, you can just disable it or uninstall it at a click of a button. When you do get to level 60, Blizzard have put in this great mechanic that allows you to consistently gear up every week. By simply completing three bosses in any raid in Shadowlands, this will give you access to something from the vault. Every Wednesday, it's a reset, so you'll get access to that gear on a Wednesday reset. By completing one Mythic Plus dungeon a week, you'll get access to another piece of gear. And by completing 1,250 honor collected from rated PvP, you'll also get another one. This can be built all the way up, so you're always working towards something and progressing in some way on your character. This basically means that if you end up doing a raid and you don't get any gear from that raid, you do a, let's say, for example, you do a raid finder and you try and do the Jailer's Vanguard, the Dark Bastille, or Shackles of Fate, or even the Reckoning, and you don't actually manage to get any gear, and you're quite unlucky in that regard, that's completely fine, because you've killed three bosses, and you're going to get a guaranteed piece of gear on a Wednesday. That's super useful, 
and a nice little way for Blizzard to make sure that you're constantly progressing on your character. There are several different weekly quests that you can do and can collect from Ouroboros. I highly suggest doing all of these as they all provide a huge amount of resources to your character and it will allow you to progress that much quicker with things like the storyline. There are PvP weekly quests which can be found here in Ouroboros in the Unclave. These will give you huge amounts of anima upon completion and even access to unique PvP gear. Look how much anima, it's crazy. You can also get conquest points and honor which can be used to purchase additional gear upon hitting level 60. This is super good and really useful for getting a character caught up to everyone else. If I go here, you can see I can actually purchase some PvP gear from this vendor. If I had spare conquest points, I could purchase more PvP gear, but at a higher level and therefore allow my character to be that much stronger in PvP. If PvP isn't your bag, then coming over to the inn in Ouroboros, the Idyllia, you can come down to their basement level where you can find two weekly PvE quests. These PvE quests will give you a bunch of reputation and also 350 anima, which is a huge amount of anima. Every week, pick those quests up and get them done. Slay those monsters. And remember, you can always join Looking for Group and get those dungeons done on just Heroic. Or if you want to do them on Mythic, you can find those Mythic groups in pre-made groups, dungeons, and find a group. This is where you'll see lots and lots of different strengths of keys that people will be completing those dungeons in. It's also worth noting that there will be weekly bosses that you can complete, such as the boss in the moor. Once you've completed your initial Torghast quests and campaign, you will get access to the weekly boss here, which will give you 250 anima. And if you're renowned level 47 or above, it will give you 500 anima. You will also get a bunch of weekly quests in Corthia, which will give you further access to additional gear. Additionally, you do have big world quests that will refresh every three days, which will give you a huge amount of anima as well. Upon hitting level 60, it will be up to you to choose what covenant you want to choose as a player. You can either choose Night Fae, or you can choose Tyrion, or you could choose the Venthyr, or additionally, you can even choose the Necrolord. It is worth playing around with the different abilities that these covenants offer, and you will also be able to see exactly what type of transmogs your character will be able to equip upon completing their campaign and getting to a high enough renown level. This will also show you the different abilities which are so cool and are definitely worth looking into. It's worth checking out both Wowhead or Icy Veins to get a accurate detailed description as to what best covenant suits your class in particular. As certain covenants are slightly stronger than other covenants, but I actually highly suggest to you, choose the covenant that you feel suits your personality best and that way you're gonna enjoy playing your character even more. It's just worth noting that if you're planning to do high-end PvE or PvP, having a stronger covenant will make a big difference at the top high-end level. Once you've chosen your specific covenant, you will need to do the Renown Grind. This is effectively where you complete quests and just general high-end gameplay, which will reward you with Renown and allow you to progress through your covenant campaign. Each level of Renown will give you a slightly different reward, so it's definitely worth keeping that in mind and maybe getting more world quests completed so you can get even more renown. To do this even quicker and progress through your Covenant campaign even faster, get your callings done. You'll get different callings for different areas requiring you to do different things. I've got two Bastion callings and one Revendreth. This means that completing these two, I will need to go to Bastion and complete world quests or whatever it is the calling is asking me to do. When I have completed these, I will be given chests and these chests will give me either just random junk that I can sell to a vendor for a high amount of just raw gold or I'll actually get unique transmogs and items specific to my covenant. This is why it's so important to have progressed with your covenant all the way up. Doing callings is a great way to earn gold every single week on your character. Upon completing the campaign, you will get access to Torghast. And Torghast is really important to you as a level 60 because this is where you're effectively going to be able to make your legendary 
pieces of equipment. You can wear one legendary at this patch and next patch will be able to wear two legendaries. By simply speaking to the rune carver and getting the specific items that you need, you'll be able to access various different powers which will allow you to make some really awesome legendaries. For further info on this, you can look at Wowhead or Icy Veins to further find out what's your best legendary for your specific class. It's definitely worth looking at this and you'll also get a good indication as to what it is you need to complete in order to get your legendary memory, which will allow you to craft it. Now, if you're having difficulties at all with getting your legendary memory, as some of them can be a little bit of a pain, there are some catch-up mechanics that Blizzard have introduced into the game to make it a little bit easier. By simply doing the Courtier daily quests, every 2000 catalog research that you get, if you go into the cave in Keeper's Respite, you can speak to the vendor in there and get a random memory for 2000 catalog research. This is really easy and it will just eventually allow you to get all of your legendary memories on your chosen class. And because these memories are account bound, all of your future classes will have access to the same memories as well. Legendaries can be quite expensive when purchased on the auction house. So it is worth just checking for your specific item to see whether you should go for the wrist or the finger. And if you go for the wrist, it might be a bit cheaper than going for a ring. Sometimes rings are a bit more expensive because they are a lot more in demand and than the wrists are and this is because of the way the domination sockets are currently working in Shadowlands. However, just go for whichever you can afford and are happy to go for. Upon dinging level 60, you might not quite be sure as to how you can best perform on your character. The best way you can figure that out is by simply practicing against things like target dummies. This is a brilliant way of figuring out what type of spells you need to be using and what type of spells you want to avoid using in combat. If you are unsure at all and you really have no idea what you are doing, it would be a huge benefit to you to go and check out Wowhead or Icy Veins for a specific class guide as the amount of information I can give you in a short video is nothing in comparison to the people who spend hundreds of hours working on those class guides. By simply practicing against a target dummy will give you a really good indication as to how it is you are performing. World of Warcraft is largely quite a competitive game and it is worth noting that if you plan to join guilds and get involved in raiding or PvP, people will expect you to know what you're doing on your class. So if you don't research and you don't check out, people might be slightly more toxic to you in that situation. You're definitely worth checking out how to play your character in the best way possible and then getting used to your character and practicing against target dummies until it becomes almost second nature. Using keybinds will always help you over someone that clicks because someone that clicks isn't able to physically be able to move at the same speed as someone that can just press their keys. However, that being said, if you feel comfortable pressing your buttons by just clicking, then do what you feel is most comfortable. However, it is worth just trying to learn how to keybind. I've got a dad who is 60 years old and he had to learn how to keybind and he massively prefers it now that he went through the effort of learning. So everyone can learn. It's entirely up to you if you want to though. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and got some value from my tips and tricks. I am a player who's been playing World of Warcraft for 18 years now, and I absolutely love this game still to this day. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for future World of Warcraft content. If you want to check out some of my epic gold guides, check out my Patreon, link is in the description, and be sure to stick around for every Monday and Friday when we go live here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. This is Erosium, out.